It seems everywhere you look lately, everyone is talking about Nano Banana. And at first it was a bit of a mystery as to who would release this model, but then Google came forward and it's actually now being called the next Gemini model for their AI art program. But is this model overhyped? Is it really the Photoshop killer? Well, today we're gonna check it out and I'll give you my thoughts on Nano Banana. Now I'm gonna be using OpenArt to test this out as they now have Nano Banana in their system and they've sponsored this video. So if I head down to image in open art, I can show you the two ways that we're able to use Nano Banana. So first of all, if I'm just in the normal image generator here, I can come to model or character, hit switch and choose Nano Banana. And then I can go through, add a prompt and change any settings here that I want. But if you're looking for something a bit simpler, they also have chat to edit. Now at the moment, chat to edit is set to use GPT, so chat GPT. We also have things like flux context and a few others but I'm gonna come down and switch to Nano Banana. Now you can see it's only 15 credits per image, so it's not super expensive to use, but it's actually incredibly fast. So if I come down here, I'm going to ask it to generate an image and I'm not gonna edit out any wait time. I'm just gonna let it run through to show you just how quickly this all works. So first I'm gonna ask for an image. I've asked it to create a portrait of a digital artist sitting in front of a laptop smiling and I want it to look like a real DSLR photo. So this will be our first little test. Let's hit enter. Then it submits that into the chat and we simply got to wait this out for a moment while it generates the image. And there we go. We have a picture of the digital artist. It looks photorealistic. What's really impressive is if you zoom in, it looks like an actual computer interface. The details come up with is actually really impressive. I'm actually blown away by how good this image turned out. But coming back to the chat, I'm gonna come up here and download the image as a JPEG. And the image resolution is 1024 by 1024. So this is very similar to other AI art models or even things like Midjourney when you're creating like a square image. So it does compete on the resolution side of things, but the detail within the image I find is actually really impressive. And this is where, so far at least, Nano Banana seems to shine. But because we're in chat, we can come back and ask for other things such as, can you make this photo be at night? And straight away, it's changed it to night pretty effectively and it looks pretty convincing. If I decided I want to add someone into this scene, what I'm gonna do is I can come down here and I can choose one of my consistent characters, go through my AI image history or even upload, or I can drag and drop this image in and it's a photo of me now attached. So if I say something like, can you add this man into the scene? I'm going to submit and it's added me in there. I think that's relatively convincing. There's a few minor ways it kind of doesn't look like me, but overall, the likeness is pretty spot on. But maybe I say something like, make the man look worried, and we get this nice sort of funny look on my face. So I think that overall looks not too bad. But I'm gonna come down now and just actually add my photo into this main image panel on the right over here. Let's see how well it can edit a photo of me. So I'm gonna come down here and ask, can you remove the beard off of the man in this new photo I just uploaded? And believe it or not, that's pretty much how I look without a beard. Not that I've seen it for about 15 years, but you can see why I keep that beard on. Now we can continue to iterate and talk to the chat, make one request at a time, slowly change our image, and it takes a lot of the sort of technical uh, barrier out because it's just a simple conversation. It's actually really simple and really quite powerful. So far, what I've noticed is that uh, it tends to pop the images just on the background and doesn't do a great job necessarily adjusting the lighting of the image. However, the details are impressive. When you look at the little finer details, including the reflection of the sunglasses, it's added the light source into that reflection. So it is a pretty intelligent uh, model does a great job with the details, just needs a little bit more work with the lighting overall. But continuing to work on my image, this is where the Nano Banana editor really shines. Every time I try to change my expression or go through and remove something, change something about myself in the photo, the details in it remain the same, it looks like me, and it's the best version of keeping the original details of an image that I've seen in an AI art model. And then restyling it, it does a really great job with restyling also. You can see it's turned me into a painting, into an anime character and a few different things. Even when it reframes me, like with the underwater image, I look like me. So this is a really, really intelligent model to play with. And I highly recommend you have a, have a go at it and see what you can make happen, especially with a photo of your own, because I feel like you'll be a lot more critical of it when you do. Now, I'm not a huge fan of chat specifically. I really like to see all the settings. So I'm gonna come up here to create image and I can see I have nano banana selected. So what I'm gonna do is actually come up with a prompt quickly. So I've added a giant banana floating in the sky with people on the ground praying to it, looking dramatic and cinematic like a screen cap from a blockbuster movie. And we're gonna explore some more of these settings soon, but for now, 
I'm just gonna run with four images, hit create. And we get some pretty impressive images, although the banana peel has a peel underneath it. I like this one here, looks pretty consistent. This one here with the glowing banana, really nice touch. And also like this one here. So it's done a pretty good job of following our prompt, creating the banana. It wasn't perfect, but we got a lot of really good images. And out of those four, three of them are pretty much spot on. Coming back, I've zoomed out just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is explore the Omni reference. So if I throw an image in here, like this drawing that I created a long time ago. Now this is an image of One Punch Man, but I'm just gonna refer to him as a bald hero for now. Uh, and I'm gonna come up here and say, transform this drawing and layout into a full color render of a bald hero with a red cape. So I have the picture here with an Omni reference. I'm gonna click create. And it seems to have stuck to the One Punch Man style far more accurately than I was expecting. So that makes Nano Banana a good sketch to image option as well. But again, I can add multiple images in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag in another image here of a, like a Muay Thai fighter I drew on my tablet a few years ago. This time I come up the top and I say, can you render the bald man sketch to match the style of the color image I attached? Now this is actually more of a chat type prompt. So let's see how well that works just in the normal image generator with these two Omni references. I hit create. And again, it's done a really good job of keeping the colors and the outline style. It's not exact, but it looks a bit better than what my drawing style is, to be honest. And I think it's done a really good job of interpreting my instructions between those two images. But let's turn off the Omni reference now because we can also change the aspect ratio. So if I went for say a widescreen, then I'm gonna say, Havasa to create a Yuki OA woodblock print of a sports car parked in front of Mystical Mountains created by Hokusai, who is a famous woodblock print artist from the Yuki OA era in the 18th and 19th century. So let's see how well it renders that at 16 to nine. With four images, I click create. You can see here, it got the style of image pretty close. However, the bottom of the car is a little bit cut off. The car's a bit more cut off on this image and on these other ones. So what's really important to note is that it seems to crop your images when you change the aspect ratio. So it may be better when using Nano Banana to simply stick with the square aspect ratio, because you can very easily crop these images with an external image cropping tool. I will share a link to one you can use below that is free. So if I decide now to go in with the same prompt and the square aspect ratio, what we get now looks pretty spot on. But the good thing about open art is if we wanted to extend that either side, we can go to the little edit button. And in their editor, I can actually just crop it right here and go crop, adjust the frame to cut out the border. I can crop the border off using the crop tool, hit tick, and then come up to expand. I can set the aspect ratio to 16 to nine, and I can expand around that original image. Click create. I can then choose the image I think suits best, such as this one here, and download it to my computer. Allowing me to add that final touch to the image to get it in the size that I want. But let's look at some restyling examples. Using this one photo I got from Pexels, I've tried a whole bunch of different styles I've thrown at Nano Banana, and you can see it does a really good job of keeping the features and the person looking like the actual person, even when it's restyled. And when it's not vastly different, it tends to keep their features pretty true. So this is a great tool even for restyling images and keeping things pretty true to the original subject. But just be aware of some copyright limitations. It doesn't do absolutely everything you want it to, but you can very effectively transform images into different photo types, like an old black and white photo, simply just made it black and white, but also a photo taken during World War One changes their attire, keeps the facial expression the same, and in this version, even the framing. So you can see how you can use that to change up your photo and even place them into different environments like the mouth of Cthulhu or even here on top of a mountain. So it does a really good job of keeping everything the way it should look and applying those different styles to the characters. But on top of that, you can also just remove a person by typing remove the man or even remove the woman. So it's really, really a powerful photo editing tool. And I tested a single prompt, which is repair this photo on a few different images. And you can see how it's able to bring out some detail just incredibly from what was uh, supplied to it. Even this light leak photo, although it did crop the image. But luckily, I got more specific and asked it to remove the light leak, and this time it managed to keep the entire photo. However, with this one, I asked it to sharpen the photo and recolor it all at once. It made the man look a little old, so I added to make him in his 20s, and you can just see the power and how much it's able to extract from this original blurry and damaged photo. But then I decided to try something a bit more advanced as a bit of a workflow in the chat. 
which is to extract this photo that has been taken a picture of and just create that photo, color it, fix it, and just see how easy it would actually work and how well it would work. And I was pretty impressed. I simply asked for it to extract the image and then uh, time by time, I looked at what I wanted to do next and it just one by one managed to get that image out, managed to clean it up, managed to recolor it, even expand upon it. And it did a really awesome job of creating a nice little workflow where I could just simply communicate with the chatbot and it just constantly came through and produced better and better images or versions of the image and it was actually really quite easy. A whole lot quicker and more effective than using something like say Photoshop. I think you will agree that spending a few minutes to chat to a bot to get the image on the left to become the image on the right is a hell of a lot easier than editing it manually. So the question is, does Nano Banana replace Photoshop? That seems to be the claim out there for a lot of people. I'm just going to say at this stage, still no. There are still a lot of limitations. AI combined with Photoshop is a really powerful combination because whatever AI can't do, you can do with your skills in Photoshop. So when people say it's going to kill Photoshop, it's a lot of hype and I cringe a little bit every time I see it. So essentially, some of the weaknesses with the AI are that you can't maintain a high resolution. You can in Photoshop. However, by combining the two, you could recolor the image using AI and then apply it over the top of your existing high resolution image using a color blend or something like that to speed that process up. And on top of that, any little minor details you want to try and fix, if the AI is just not quite grasping it, you can go into Photoshop and because you have full control, you can make those changes. It's just a lot simpler to get very simple or very difficult things with Photoshop because if you have the skills, you can actually make it happen. AI covers a very broad range of it and Nano Banana does a really good job. It's not perfect. It does make a few mistakes here and there as you've seen in this video. But as far as a tool goes for making life a hell of a lot easier, it's definitely the ultimate companion for Photoshop. But is Nano Banana the best model for AI art in general? I'm gonna say it has strengths and weaknesses. Things like uh, Open Arts Realism model I found to be more realistic for generating images, and there are definitely a lot of other uses the other models are better at. But when it comes to editing images, retaining features and keeping things the same, I do believe Nano Banana seems to be the best out there for this purpose. So if you're looking to edit images with AI, Nano Banana is definitely my number one choice and I highly recommend it. Now, the reason why you might want to use Nano Banana in OpenArt AI instead of by itself is the amount of insane tools that OpenArt has. We can open up an image and simply take it right into the AI video platform where you can choose from a number of different models and convert it into an AI video quite easily and effectively. So that for one is a really powerful tool, but also your ability to get creative upscales and make the images much, much larger is definitely a powerful uh, add-on to any Nano Banana tool. But also, if you're just not getting the results you need, you can switch between models. You can use the AI editor like we did before to expand upon those images. So one of the reasons why I think it's cool to use different models in tandem with other AI features such as what OpenAI has is that you have a more complete solution because you have more options. So that's my verdict on Nano Banana. Very impressive. I would say slightly overhyped, but still really, really powerful for editing your images. If you want to check it out on OpenArt AI, there is a link in the description below. They are the sponsor of this video. I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. But otherwise, that is it for today, guys. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.